Our first team this afternoon is from Michigan State University. Good afternoon, Midwest Veterinary Solutions board members. On behalf of everyone at Spartan Agri Marketing, we are extremely excited to share with you a dynamic marketing campaign introducing Optimax, the first vaccine that blocks the production of compounds which lead to boar taint and allows producers to regain the positive growth characteristics that have traditionally been lost through castration. Before we get into any further details, we'd like to take a moment to introduce ourselves. My name is Amanda Solman. Hi, I'm Beth Moran. I'm Beth Moe. I'm Dylan Glassy. And I'm Mitch Bigelow. In American hog production, problems with aggression and boar taint, which is a dislike smell or taste found in boar meat that can result in rejection of product at the processor, has led to the widespread use of castration in male hogs. While castration does fix these issues, unfortunately it creates new problems as castrated males are slower growing, fatter, and less efficient feed converters. Using Optimax, however, producers will be able to continue controlling aggression and boar taint while also being able to regain the positive growth characteristics associated with boars, resulting in lower feed costs, improved meat quality, and increase growth rates. You have developed Optimax, which will now join your current American livestock pharmaceutical product line. Optimax is the first vaccine which utilizes the boar's own immune system to block the production of compounds which cause boar taint. It is administered in the grow finish stage of production in two doses, the first given after eight to nine weeks of age and the second given four weeks later. Optimax has already been approved in 32 countries around the world, and as you look to introduce it to your American market, it will change the way U.S. pork producers look at boars. Spartan Agri Marketing has developed a marketing campaign to introduce Optimax into the United States pork production industry. You have presented us with three marketing objectives related to profitability, customer satisfaction, and market share. As you will see, the outline plan will achieve these goals. The marketing plan has been formatted to fit the unique coordination of the modern pork production system. Over the past few decades, the structure of the commercial hog industry has changed significantly. Today, nearly 90% of all pork is raised by approximately 50 pork production systems, such as Smithfields and Triumph Foods. These pork production systems are large networks of farms owned by a single company, family, or individual. In these pork production systems, the same business owns animals from the minute they are born until they are slaughtered. Just because all the animals are owned by the same pork production company does not mean they are all raised on the same farm. Within this vertically integrated industry, specialization is key. Pork production systems either own or contract with smaller farms that focus on different stages of the pork production cycle such as sow farms focusing on breeding, gestation, and farrowing, weaning farms, and grow finishing farms. It is at this last stage where Optimax will be administered. We have found that the greatest potential for sales of Optimax is established by targeting high-level decision makers within the 10 largest pork production systems in the country. Taking advantage of the high level of vertical integration in the pork industry will allow us to target nearly 40% of all boars in the country. Due to the unique structure of today's pork production system, a rollout for Optimax has been based off the size of the company rather than tr the traditional geographic rollout. In year one of Optimax's rollout, MVS will target the three largest pork production systems and 13.5 million boars. In year two, 
An additional 3.7 million bores will be targeted through the next three largest pork production systems. And lastly, in year three, by targeting an additional four pork production systems, 3.6 million bores will be added. We have developed the marketing strategies for Optimax based on four trends in the U.S. pork industry. First, pork consumers around the world will continue to demand high quality, affordable, and lean meat products. Second, the United States pork industry will continue its trend of being highly vertically integrated, as was previously described. Third, the production of most grow finish hog operations will continue to be under contract. And finally, grow, grow finish producers will continue to be paid based on their feed conversion abilities. The target customers for Optimax are the high level decision makers within the country's 10 largest pork production systems. These decision makers make all choices related to animal health protocol as they have large stake in the success of the farm from weaning to slaughtering. Once these choices are made, they are then passed on to and implemented by the contract growers. In order to reach these decision makers, your sales representatives will capitalize on their existing relationships with them developed through sales of your other products. Through this, they will be able to better educate them on the benefits of Optimax. They will work with producers in order to identify the best areas for product implementation and will be important in providing a successful experience with Optimax. This will lead to repeat purchases, product expansion within targeted herds, and expansion to more pork production systems. There are several key influencers that decision makers look to when developing herd health protocol. These include contract farmers, veterinarians, and processors. Contract growers are essential for finishing hogs, and ultimately, they will be the ones to use Optimax. They will use their relationships with grower, with decision makers, to offer suggestions and provide feedback related to the product. Veterinarians collaborate with decision makers to develop and carry out herd health protocol, and will be invaluable in the writing prescriptions for Optimax. Processors are interested in the highest quality of meat possible. They will want assurance that Optimax is effective and the meat is free from boar taint. Optimax faces direct competition from physical castration, both with and without anesthesia. This procedure is performed by cell farm employees within 36 hours of birth and like Optimax, reduces boar taint and aggression. However, physical castration results in lower growth rates, less lean product, and lower feed efficiency. When, <coughs> when anesthesia is used, high veterinary costs and costs due to the anesthetic can be incurred. And finally, physical castration can cause some pain and stress in piglets, leading animal activist groups to deem the process as inhumane. Conversely, by using Optimax, treated males' average daily gain can improve by as much as a half a pound per day, thus e decreasing farmers' expense on feed by up to $30 per boar. This product also allows for leaner meat quality, decreasing back fat up to a tenth of an inch. While a prescription is required, a veterinarian is not needed to administer the product thus decreasing veterinary cost. Because Optimax is administered through injection, this eliminates the pain associated with physical, surgical castration. Taking this into account, Spartan Agri Marketing has outlined an in-depth SWOT analysis for Optimax. The strengths of this product are in its ability to maintain the positive growth characteristics associated with bores, while improving feed efficiency, resulting in increased producer profits, and reducing pain when compared to physical castration. This is in addition to Optimax's strong reputation as a global option for reducing boar taint. While Optimax is a strong product, it's not immune to some weaknesses that we must acknowledge. First, Optimax requires training grow finish vaccination crews to ensure full effectiveness of the product. Additionally, it requires two separate doses, increasing time and animal restraint. And finally, the initial cost of Optimax is more than its competitive options. Besides these internal weaknesses, there are some external threats to Optimax. There is potential for changes in legislation 
regarding the use of injections on animals, which could potentially impair producer ability to use this technology. A change in consumer preference to a negative image of pharmaceuticals could potentially impact both the retail market and legislation. Processors may be skeptical of Optimax's effectiveness and hesitate when purchasing non-castrated males. And lastly, unforeseen competitors may enter the market. Despite these threats and weaknesses, it's important to recognize the opportunities that Optimax has in its present market. Currently, consumers are demanding meat products that are produced in a humane way. Additionally, as Mitch mentioned, legislation could be a threat. But it could also be an opportunity to Optimax, as the industry could be facing changes regarding castration, similar to the castration bans and regulations in many European countries. The marketing plan for Optimax is based on two key planning assumptions. First, pork production systems will continue to strive to increase production efficiency by increasing feed efficiency. And second, producers will continue to receive premiums for leaner, higher yielding hogs. MVS has established three marketing goals and objectives to be met by the close of year three. First, MVS will strive to attain a 27% market share among the 10 targeted firms. Secondly, achieve a Six Sigma customer satisfaction at the farm and processor level. And lastly, reach a profit of $11.5 million. Optimax will be positioned as the first commercial vaccine that maintains the positive natural growth characteristics associated with intact boars while maintaining or while controlling boar taint and aggressive male behavior. Optimax is administered in two two milliliter doses and is available to producers in two convenient sizes, 250 milliliter and 500 milliliter bottles. We recommend that you sell Optimax to producers at a cost of $315 for the 250 milliliter bottles and $625 for the 500 milliliter bottles. This price equates to a $5 per bore cost to the producer and a 150% markup for MVS. MVS will use a variety of promotional tactics to market Optimax with the goal of developing one-on-one -on -one relationships with farm decision makers, key influencers, and employees. Tactics will be centered on ensuring correct product usage, positive experiences, repeat purchases, and expansion of product use. Optimax will be promoted to the decision makers of your targeted pork production systems primarily through existing relationships with MVS sales representatives. These sales representatives will be in charge of on-site presentations, regular communication, and education about the product, and will, be and will be responsible for making sure Optimax is at the forefront of decision makers' minds. Upon the initial purchase of Optimax, Midwest Veterinary Solutions sales representatives will hold training sessions and regional seminars to train vaccination crews on proper timing, safety measures, and benefits of Optimax. Sales representatives will also be available after the initial training for on-farm assistance. Beyond the farm, MVS is currently attending several conferences and trade shows with its current swine products. Optimax will capitalize on these existing tactics by attending World Pork Expo and the North American International Livestock Exposition in Louisville, Kentucky. These events not only attract your targeted pork production systems, but also their contract farmers, veterinarians, processors, and those firms in the industry that look to your targeted companies as innovators. MVS will focus a large portion of each display on Optimax, including information on improved growth rates, research data, and carcass comparisons. Trained sales representatives will be available to answer questions, distribute information, and supply promotional products. In addition to these displays, MVS will hold special events for targeted firms, key influencers, and the media at each trade show in order to build excitement around the product. Spartan Agri-Marketing also suggests that you attend state-specific pork expos throughout the three years, especially in states such as Minnesota, Iowa, and North Carolina, the states with the largest amount of production focused on grow finish hogs. In order to capture the attention of both your primary and secondary markets, 
we suggest you place advertisements in both regional and national publications. National publications should include Pork Magazine and National Hog Farmer. Regional advertisements should be placed in publications focused on larger hog production states such as Iowa Pork Producer Magazine. We would also suggest that you place advertorials in these larger states Farm Bureau news publications. Midwest Veterinary Solutions will have a web page connected to your company's website dedicated to Optimax. This web page will generate awareness about the product and show information such as frequently asked questions, product advantages, and research findings. This web page will continue your quest to create a transparent information system that is available to all visitors, including consumers and the media. Due to our intense on-site and sales representative focused promotional strategy, over $1 million has been allocated to the promotion of Optimax. Spartan Niagara Marketing has projected your promotional cost to start out at over $340,000 in year one, and by the end of the rollout period, grow to almost $440,000. The financial analysis illustrates the cost of selling Optimax, with the largest expense being the research and development of such a new idea in pharmaceuticals. Following the approximately $567,000 loss in year one, by the end of year three, profits will grow to nearly $12 million, equating to an approximately 74% return on investment. Spartan Agar Marketing has developed various ways of monitoring and measuring your marketing goals. Profitability will be evaluated quarterly through financial statements and monthly sales reports. If the profitability goal is met, you should increase production and expand it to new markets such as niche and smaller pork production systems. Spartan Agar Marketing recommends you reinvest any additional profits back into the promotional plans in order to assist with this expansion. However, if the profitability is more than 5% below the goal, you should assess sales representatives' knowledge regarding the product, as well as consider any industry hesitancies that may have resulted in decreased sales. Also, MVS should address any inefficiencies in promotional plans and product development. In order to achieve the goal of maintaining Six Sigma customer satisfaction, we suggest that you monitor customer satisfaction through surveys of sales representatives, end users, and key influencers, while also meeting with your target firm decision makers semi-annually. If the goal is met, you should evaluate customer interest in bulk and other packaging sizes and continue to encourage the use of positive word-of-mouth promotion about the product. However, if customer satisfaction is more than 5% below the goal, you should identify any areas of dissatisfaction or pursue further research and development to identify and correct any potential product limitations. The final goal established by MVS is to attain a 27% market share among the 10 targeted firms. This will be monitored through sales reports and surveys of sales representatives, end users, and key influencers. If the market share goal is met, you should work to expand product usage among contract growers within the targeted firms, as well as expand into new markets. However, if the market share is below the goal by 5% or more, you should work with end users and key influencers to identify any hesitancies in the implementation of Optimax. MVS should also consider offering additional assistance during the implementation phase of Optimax or Reconsider product positioning. American pork producers can stop settling for less. Optimize growth, maximize feed efficiency, and lean meat production. Make Optimax your choice today. We'd be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Is this on? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, great. Uh, good work, guys. Uh, this is a fantastic product, uh, a lot of upside to it. I, I'm not sure there's a lot of downside to it. Uh, I, I do have a question, though, on um, 
the want or need for this uh, in, in the producer's mind. If they see something that's going to return them, if I figure it correctly, at a $5 cost per bore and it reduces feed costs by $35, that's a $30 increase right there in their, in their bottom line. Why would someone not want this and have you uh, talked to any producers at all, any decision makers at all that have said, yes, is a good idea, but? Well, to answer the first part of that, um, the only reason, well, actually, they would make more than $30 at, at maximum level, including the premiums they could receive, and um, they can get more hogs through their system. So we're estimating at about $45 maximum that they could attain. Um, reasons they would not want to implement this is if they don't have the facilities or labor to handle this kind of thing, because it is going to require more injections. Um, another possibility would be if they already have too lean of hogs, and then they're higher on the higher end of the lean percentage. If they go any leaner, they're not going to get a higher premium with it. So it, there's really not that much incentive besides the additional feed cost. That's pretty good incentive. Yes. I appreciate that answer. I, I, have you talked to anyone about this, and how many have you talked to, and what positives and negatives did you pull from that discussion? Um, yes, we have talked with producers um, throughout our rollout region, and uh, all of them are very familiar with the product already as, as a proven product um, internationally, and so uh, now that we've received FDA approval on the product, um, now it's go time and we're ready to, Im uh, ready to implement it into their production system. So all have already expressed interest in the product and are ready to just um, start implementing it. Question then. Um, so you've identified the top ten production systems and you said, I believe at the beginning, that they make decisions as a system. And if they're very excited about it, that's great. But then why do we need to be in publications and at trade shows when so few people make that decision? That's an excellent question. What we're targeting through our publications and trade shows is our key influencers. So our contract farmers, our veterinarians, and our processors, all of them need to be on board to implement the product as well. And through those publications and trade shows, we're also targeting our secondary market. Kind of uh, somewhat related, if uh, you have, uh, you know, 10 customers um, and 10 decision makers, so you really have 10 people that you're trying to reach uh, uh, along those lines. So I understand the, perhaps the, the reason why you'd want to reach your secondary markets. What, I, what concerns me about those particular 10, knowing that those guys are, are very integrated, Smithfield, Triumph, Seaboard, all also uh, process their, their animals as well. Uh, what kind of concerns uh, have been addressed uh, from their ends, or what kind of what kind of reassurance can you give them that this is not going to screw up their sell of pork products at all? I think the key with this is the fact that it's been proven in Europe for five years already as a product over there in, in New Zealand and Australia as well. So they can look at that data to see that the product has worked, is proven. And they can also look at our university research and our research farm data, and which proves that this product has been successful here as well. I mean, do you, do you, uh, did you give any consideration to, I know it's, it makes good sense to start with the top three uh, in year one, because that's the lowest hanging fruit. Was there any consideration given to maybe look at uh, one of the smaller uh, companies uh, as a launch to begin with, uh, just because you might have easier access? Um, we did consider that, however, we felt because they are the innovators in the industry. Um, the smaller pork production systems look to them to um, find the newest technology that we thought it would be better to go for, okay, the big dogs. Um, also, they are looking uh, for ways to always keep that competitive edge, and they feel that this is the next product that will keep them ahead of everybody else. I've got a couple questions. Number one is... And it kind of goes back to the first question I was asked over there. How did you establish $5 as the value you want to charge on this? Um, that t price takes into account the price that you need to recover your production costs 
as well as any other costs in related to production distri distribution and a, also a considerable markup for you. Also, our market research showed um, a price range that producers were willing to pay, and this falls within that price range. Good. My second question is you had a goal here of uh, hitting 27% share within three years. It seems that, if I'm Smithfield, that when I decide to go this way, I'm going to go the whole way because otherwise I got all, how will I be able to know whether this particular contractor did it and this one didn't and I don't want to run the risk of the one that didn't do it is branding my hogs as having taint, the, the taint to it. So I'm curious as to how did you arrive at your 27% because it seems like it would be once I bought it and it worked, I'd want my whole contractors to do it. So your share would be higher. Um, absolutely. Uh, actually, first to start out with how the 27%, um, that is taking into account that uh, the first year will start with 10% of their bores, and then the second and third year advance to 20 and 30%, and so that's an average across all three years. Um, and then to back to your question, that is um, a conservative uh, amount of what we of what with our market research talking to Smithfield and some of these other producers what they can what they um, confidently feel they can move over because there is a learning curve to this pro to this uh, implementing this product we want to make sure that crews are effectively trained um, before we start moving into huge amounts of bores um, and just to con continue adding to that um, we do have the ability to expand production in the event that there is further interest Have you guys looked into uh, alternative modes of delivering the product so that the application is not so intense? I mean, because that's, that's something that's obviously going to be of interest uh, because labor is going up. Have you looked at alternative ways of delivering it? Yes, throughout our research and development, um, we actually also looked at the possibility of this product being orally ingested, so a, a feed additive per se, um, and the product is not active, and so we will, or not active orally, so we will continue as we um, move further in research and development to try and see if there, and um, pursue other options for administration, but as of right now, it only, um, we only found it to be active through injection. So that sort of naturally leads into my follow-up question. You have a $4 million line item for research and development um, for every year. Um, help me understand what that is. seems pretty significant. Um, so far, you as a company have spent around $80 million um, on the United States research and development part of this product. So that $4 million is the $80 million amortized over the 20-year lifespan of your patent. If you don't mind, I'd like to go back to the pricing issue and how you got to it. I understand that there's a cost level and that uh, you added in a profit of 150%, which sounds like a lot, but it's not really. Uh, particularly when you look at this product is a unique product. Uh, no one else has it, and it saves the producer a lot of money. So what if we were to double the cost? What happens there? Was, can you tell me a little bit about how you looked at the price elasticity of this thing and where you think the break point is? Uh, well, it's important to remember that this is a new product. And the reason why it's being so successful in the United States is because corn prices have reached record high amounts, which attribute to the corn prices. And we recognize that in the future, probably not the near future, those corn prices could go down. So we still want this product to be profitable to the farmer. Um, but we also foresee that the welfare issue is a bigger problem to them as well. And, <clears throat> this sort of goes back. Oh, I'm sorry, I heard. Um, how much time do we have? Um, I'm, I'm struggling with, it, it, you're talking, we have 10 decision makers here, um, and a lot of promotion. I'm not sure that those 10 influencers are, are going through trade shows and, and, and reading National Hog Farmer from front to back. Um, is there something else in here uh, in terms of educating those 10 decision makers uh, and influencers? Because it's, it's a really small market uh, and a very small margin for error. So, Yeah, the... Uh the education for these decision makers will be the one-on-one -on -one meetings with your sales representatives. 
they will meet with them multiple times throughout the year as well as after the product has been purchased and implemented just to make sure that the product is being effective and being implemented in the correct ways on your on their farms.